The latest Nanos poll shows the Liberals and Conservatives both sitting at 32 percent support, separated by the slimmest of margins. The NDP reversing their recent surge, slipping back half a point to 19.2 percent. I want to bring in pollster Nick Nanos now. Hi there, Nick. Happy Thanksgiving Monday. Good morning. So we're a week away from Election Day when you crunch your numbers, and I'm sure you dream about these numbers. What are you thinking in terms of where we stand on a minority parliament? Well, actually, what's clear looking at the CTV Globe Nanos tracking over the past week is that Canadians have given a big thumbs down to both the Liberals and the Conservatives in terms of forming a majority government at around... Both of them have 32 percent. That's much short of what's needed to form a majority. And people have liked what they've seen from Jagmeet Singh and the New Democrats, but they're still trailing, as you can see. They're in the high teens. So uh, what's interesting regionally is that the New Democrats, most of their pickup was in British Columbia, Quebec, and Atlantic Canada. Not much of a pickup in Ontario. British Columbia, there's some interesting vote splits, so that's good news for Jagmeet Singh. But the pickup in Quebec, I'm not sure if it's any kind of orange surge in the province of Quebec, but the NDP are more competitive than they were earlier in the campaign in the province of Quebec. But they're so, still trailing the Liberals in the bloc. So are you with Don at, at this point? And his opinion is, we're looking at a minority government. Exactly. Unless something ground-shattering happens, we're looking at some sort of minority government, either Liberal or Conservative, and they'll have to work with the Bloc and the New Democrats, or a combination of those two parties, or one of those two parties, in order to try to form some type of working arrangement in the next House of Commons. Let's talk about this so-called Singh surge. What do you think has led to the boost in his support? Well, what we saw before the big English and the big French debates last week was when we measure Jagmeet Singh's personal brand, there was about a 14-point increase in the first part of the campaign in the, in the percentage of Canadians that thought that he had the qualities of a good political leader, but that did not convert into ballot support or into preferred prime minister numbers for Singh. But coming out of the English debate and the French debate, there was a bit of an accumulation effect. I think for a lot of Canadians, they liked what they saw. He was consistent in terms of his performance and an increasing number, disappointed with Justin Trudeau, unsure about Andrew Scheer, opted for the New Democrats. Maybe it's a bit of an orange, none of the above that we saw in the last week. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the close in terms of whether there's any new trend that emerges in the national election campaign. So come election day, is it going to boil down to Quebec? It's, a, it's actually going to boil down to Quebec in the 905 uh, swath of ridings because those ridings are still very competitive between the Liberals and the Conservatives. But it's also going to come down to vote ter voter turnout. Are young people going to turn out the same way that they did in 2015? That could be a significant impact on the outcome because we know that both the New Democrats and the Liberals do quite well among millennials. And uh, if they show up, it'll probably be good news for one of those two parties. What about advance polls, Nick? We were reporting this morning um, we're, we're on pace to out... Uh, outvote ourselves, basically, from 2015. Already 2 million people have voted. They're still today. That was just for two days. Does that favor one party or another? Well, you know, usually what happens is uh, a higher voter turnout would hypothetically favor the Liberals. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we can't factor into the equation is that Elections Canada has been much more proactive in making advanced polls accessible on university campuses and colleges, in communities across the country, and that we don't know what the combination is of just Elections Canada providing more opportunities for Canadians to vote versus people that are motivated. But the reality is, is it's good news in terms of the proportion of Canadians that vote in the advanced polls. And the other thing that we do know is that when you look at the results from the advanced polls, they usually mirror the image of the polls at that time in the election. They're not necessarily predictive of the outcome. So, uh, so I think what we would expect is, just based on the votes that have come in, that uh, they would probably be very similar to the current environment, which has the Conservatives and the Liberals tied, and the New Democrats picking up support, but still a distant third. All right. Nick Nanos, thanks so much. Really appreciate it.